Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Nicolette, back at it with another YouTube video. Hey! So today we're going to talk about something a little bit different with the quarantine and all this crazy stuff that's happening everywhere. I just kind of wanted to talk about something that we all love and enjoy and that is food. So over the past like year or two, I have shot with different companies in the Los Angeles and Houston areas. So I've worked with Uber Eats, I've worked with Yelp, I've worked with DoorDash, and I've photographed at least 300 restaurants. And I've learned a few tricks and tips along the way, and especially working with the restaurants and the chefs, I always get asked like, how can I photograph my food a little bit better? And so today we're going to shoot in the simplest form and that is going to be with natural lighting. So let's go ahead and get started. So today we're gonna to be shooting a masala from my very favorite place, Trader Joe's. We're going to be throwing in some broccoli, some cauliflower, some carrots, and my favorite, some garlic. So shooting wise, especially when you're starting off, is not about the nicest lens, the nicest camera, all of that. It's really just based off of what resources you have and learning how to utilize the tools that you have. So today we're going to be shooting with my old camera, which is my Canon 70D. It was my trusty dusty for a long, long time. We are going to be shooting with my pretty gross looking Galaxy S7. Old version, but we're gonna get the photos. And then we're also going to be shooting with my Canon 5D Mark IV, which is what is shooting right now. When shooting food, it's important to shoot in indirect lighting. You do not want to shoot in direct lighting because that is going to cast some pretty harsh shadows on your photos. If possible, you can shoot outside underneath an umbrella or you can shoot by a window indoors. If you are shooting indoors, please be sure to turn off all the lights as most lights cast an orangey tone on your dishes, which is something that you don't want. When shooting, mess with different angles and placements. My favorite is the above head shot, the overhead shot. There's just a lot of different things that you can do with it. You can get the side angle, you can get the full plate, you can get close ups. The top is my favorite, but there are so many more to mess around with. When using my DSLR, I like to shoot between 4.0 and 7.0 in apertures. I like to shoot 4.0 whenever I want that bokeh effect, and 7.0, especially when I do the overhead shot, what that does is it helps guarantee that everything is in focus. Another thing to consider when you're first starting out is having some inspirational images. Find the shots that you like and try to recreate them the best that you can. Don't be afraid to incorporate props as well. You can find them from around the house, you can find them around your restaurant, wherever it is that you're shooting. Grab a spoon, grab a napkin, whatever you've got, and just try to present it the best way possible. So if you feel like your photos are coming out a little bit dark, chances are they might be. So what you can do is bring in a reflector. And the one that I have here, I purchased off of Amazon. Um, you can also buy a reflector off of any really camera store sites like BNH or Adorama. But if you're in a time crunch and you don't want to, you know, go through all that mess trying to find a reflector, you can also go to your local Walgreens, Walmart, drugstore, and just get a white poster board. And the white poster board should be able to reflect just as well, if not better. When shooting with a reflector, if you don't have a tripod of sorts along with an A-clamp, you can always have a friend. Grab your friend, grab the chef, grab somebody and say, hey, can you hold this? Because we need to get these photos done. And that basically sums up the video. I hope you guys enjoyed all the little tips and tricks. I think the moral of the story is have fun with it. You know, the first time might not come as perfect as you want it to come. The second time might not come as perfect as you want it to be, but the more you try, the more you implement new techniques, and the more you learn about the gear that you already have, the better the photos are going to be. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, as every YouTuber says. Hit that like button, as every YouTuber says. 
And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys again soon and we will talk more tips and tricks here for our photography. See ya!